Joe, if you are ready, I am going to turn it over to you and thank you again to the Greater City Aquarium Society for being a sponsor. Um, this is kind of a milestone year for them, and I will let Joe talk about that. Oh, thank Joe. you, David. And good morning to, uh, good afternoon, early good afternoon to everybody. Um, first of all, for us at Greater City, we're, we're very honored to be able to support uh, a wonderful organization like the Northeast Council. And uh, we're especially happy to be able to do it this year because we're celebrating our 100th anniversary of uh, continuous uh, support of the hobby since 1922. We've never been out of business. And, and that's an amazing thing for an all volunteer organization. Um, so um, I'm going to uh, just show a couple of slides uh, that you know, focus on the history of our club and some of the things we've done over the years to support our wonderful hobby. And uh, it's my privilege to be able to share some of this with you. So I'm going to give this a shot and hope I don't screw up this PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> but uh, let's try. You, got, let's the, you got the cat to help you. The cat's helping. Okay. Here we go. All right, let's see. I see it here. We're cooking with gas, my friend. It's coming up. Okay. I don't All know. Right, can it's everybody, up. It's can up. everybody see that? Yep, we got it. Okay. So um, let me just briefly uh, say, because uh, I, I always find these things kind of amusing, you know, how did Greater City get started uh, in uh, – in 1922. Well, the, the funny thing of it is this. In 1922, there was a very well-known aquarium society known as the Ridgewood Aquarium Society. Now, those for those of you who are not familiar with New York City, Ridgewood is a section of the borough of Queens, and it sits right on the boundary line with the borough of Brooklyn. And back in the 1920s, Ridgewood was a place that had a lot of German immigrants. And we all know that in Germany, the hobby was always very, very popular. So when these German immigrants came to New York City and settled in Ridgewood, they, of course, brought the love of the hobby with them. So they had this wonderful club called the Ridgewood Aquarium Society. They they published a magazine. It was short lived, but they published a very nice magazine. In fact, uh, copies of their magazine is in the collection of the Smithsonian Institute. Uh, but here was the problem. Uh, most of their members were German. I, I mean, I have their show catalog, their show journal from 1924. And it has a list of all their members. And I would say easily, when you look at the surnames in there, 90% of them are German. Okay. So the problem was they started these meetings with everybody was taught speaking in German. Even their speakers spoke in German. So some of the people who were members of the Ridgewood Aquarium Society said, hey, uh, we don't speak German. We don't understand German. We, we've got to start our own club that speaks English. <laughs> and that's how the Greater City Aquarium Society got started as an offshoot of the um, Ridgewood Aquarium Society. Now, here's a New York Times article. As you can see the date, it's 1937. And if you look on the right-hand side, you see this two-column article that says, New fish overshadows guppies. <laughs> and it says neon tetras, like sign of their name, get highest award in first appearance here. And when you read the rest of the article, uh, it, there's a couple of interesting things in it. Not only that, we were the first club to put a neon tetra on display in a show, at least in New York City. And if you know, if you know anything about the uh, Neon Tetra, it was only introduced around 1932. So to have one in a show in 1937, only five years later, was quite an achievement. 
And of course, people would come out by the thousands to see something like a neon tetra because you couldn't see it anywhere else you, uh, in the media. OK, uh, back then there, were, there wasn't color photography like there is now or anything like that. So in 1937, look at this. We're in the New York Times. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's how popular our hobby was in the 30s, that you would you would get a two column uh, article in the New York Times. All right. The other thing that's interesting when you look at the details of this article is it says that this is the this is Greater City's 10th annual show. So that tells me that we have we held our first show in 1927 only five years after we were founded and the other thing you'll see is that it says the annual show of the greater city aquarium society of brooklyn and the reason for that is as you'll see later on uh as as i told you the ridgewood aquarium society uh ridgewood was on the border with brooklyn so when greater city got started they too most of the, had most of their members from that border area between Brooklyn and Queens. Um, and, and you could see like, here's a very old first place um, blue ribbon from the monthly exhibit. Uh, this thing must go back to the 1930s, this ribbon. And you could see it says clearly Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Um, and, and this was given out, you know, it, what, I guess we now call the monthly bowl show, but it just goes to show you that that idea of having a monthly exhibit goes back decades and decades and decades. Here's an invitation uh, to our 1933 show. And um, you can see that again, we were meeting at the time and we weren't just having the shows here. I know this from having, I have so much literature and I've researched this. We were meeting at the Highland Park YMCA. Highland Park is a park that sits right off what used to be known as the Interborough Parkway, which connects Brooklyn and Queens. It's now called the Jackie Robinson Parkway. But that's where Highland Park is. It's right at the end, right on the border there uh, between Brooklyn and Queens. And that Highland Park is still there. And so is the YMCA. And you'll notice that the show ran for four days. And look at the time. It ran from 1 to 10 p.m., okay? <laughs> oh, my God. If I tried to organize a show today that ran for four days and people had to be there till 10 p.m., 10 p.m., forget it. I wouldn't get anybody. <laughs> and here is our show journal from the year before, from 1932. And it was a very professionally done show journal. You could see the artistry involved in, in it. I mean, that's not a realistic ain't looking angelfish, but it certainly is artistic. And uh, you can see, again, we were meeting at, you know, at the Highland Park YMCA and having our show there. And this is a gold medal from our 1932 show, okay? And uh, you can see the, the logo, the angelfish. It's done in a very interesting way with the ventral fins splayed outward like that. And uh, the, the, the interesting thing about this gold medal uh, is that it was won by a gentleman named Carl Kaplan. Now, you guys have probably never heard the name Carl Kaplan, understandably, but he is was the cousin of Ross Sokoloff, who is an aquarium hobby legend. I'm sure many of you have, over the years met Ross Sokoloff, knew about him. He was a wonderful guy and a real hobby, you know, pioneer in many different ways. Well, his cousin, who was slightly older, uh, won this medal at our 1932 show. And I was very fortunate to meet Ross's cousin, Carl, the guy who won this show uh, back in 1997 when we were celebrating our 75th anniversary. So for me, it was a very exciting moment to meet a man 
who was at our show in 1932. I mean, to me, that's like almost like meeting George Washington. OK, I mean, uh, it was a fantastic moment. And uh, in his generosity, Carl gave us this medal for our historical archives. Um, so uh, it, it was a very proud moment for all of us. And it, it's just, uh, you know, a fantastic thing to have in our collection. And then uh, even in the, you know, uh, talk, as you can see, this issue is from uh, 1969. Um, and uh, on the cover of our magazine, Modern Aquarium. Uh, and this, this is a photograph of Paul Hanel at one of our fish shows. You can see the little tanks in front of them. Of course, back then in 1969, we used uh, two and a half gallon stainless steel tanks. And Paul Hanel was a very famous guppy breeder. I'm sure some of you have heard the name. Um, he he died unfortunately in 1969, but he he was you know active with our society. He lived in the Bronx, and um, he he you know he he was a one of our more most famous members and. Um, and Modern Aquarium, this particular series, which was published uh, from like 1968 to 1973, is a, was a terrific magazine. It was in the small format, had lots of black and white photos, and um, it's one of the sources from which I get most of my stories about uh, Greater City. So we, we are very fortunate that this magazine was published during that time. Um, and it, it shows that, you know, Greater City was always interested in disseminating knowledge and in, and having top quality uh, and having a top quality magazine. And it continues to this day. This is a recent cover of our magazine, and uh, it's it's a large format. It's eight and a half by eleven. It has all color photography. And we now we've been publishing it, as you can see, it's volume 28. So we've been publishing this magazine 10 times a year continuously since 1994. And uh, the thing I, I want to emphasize, uh, because I think it's a credit to our members, is that this magazine comes out on the first Wednesday of the month when we meet so we don't meet in january and february currently but 10 times a year this magazine comes out like clockwork on the first wednesday of the month can you imagine that 28 years in a row this magazine has come out on the first wednesday of the month and part of the reason for that is that greater city has always had a tradition of not mailing the magazine we do not mail the magazine. So you have to be at the meeting to get the magazine. Uh, of course, if you miss a meeting, it's not a problem. We have multiple you know, copies and you can get it the next month. But, um, never, but the thing is, you see, it requires precision. You must have this magazine out on the first Wednesday of the month. And I just think it's a tremendous testament to the kind of people we have at Greater City, that this all volunteer thing comes out with such precision on the first Wednesday of the month. The other thing, though, of course, is, you know, in, in a bow to the modern era, if you go to the Greater City uh, website, you know, uh, you can click on our modern aquarium banner and you can see every issue going back to 1994. And you can click it page by page, you know, and read every issue. And um, as a lot of people in the NEC know, Modern Aquarium has probably won more writing awards than any other U.S. Uh, hobby publication. Uh, we, we're blessed to have a, a group of terrific writers, uh, terrific editors, and uh there's a lot of very interesting articles in Modern Aquarium that, but for Modern Aquarium, would never show up anywhere else. 
and one of one of the other terrific things greater city has done is that in 19 i mean i'm sorry in 2018 we published this book uh this is the autobiography of another hobby legend rosario lacourt it took us at greater city it took the volunteers uh about 10 years it took a long time to put this book together okay but this is a fantastic contribution to the history of the aquarium hobby uh right up there with uh ross sokoloff's book uh confessions of a tropical fish addict uh this book has uh, tremendous photographs historical photographs beautiful color photographs of fish but most importantly it has a fascinating story even people i've i've gotten feedback from people who not even in the hobby okay don't don't care anything about tropical fish or aquariums or anything and have told me that they found the book fascinating and that's due to rosario's ability to remember things that no one else would remember and to tell them in a very fascinating way. And so we're very proud at Greater City to have been able to be the catalyst for publishing this autobiography. And the another thing we're very proud of is um, we were the first club to introduce the CARES program. And that's largely due to the fact that we had a member uh, and she's still a member although she moved away but we still regard her as our, our a member uh claudia dickinson um uh who also wrote the book aquarium care of cichlids well when she was a member uh and a more active you know in coming to meetings and everything in that way she came up with this idea of starting this cares preservation program uh and 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 of course at greater city we will we were wholeheartedly behind it and uh i'm sure you're all familiar with it now it's grown into this tremendous national program um dedicated to preserving uh, some of our more endangered uh aquarium fish and we couldn't be prouder uh, of claudia uh and and uh, you know we're we're very happy to have been the first club to inaugurate this program so uh, that pretty much uh, sums up uh, some of the things I wanted to say about Greater City. Um, and uh, so I, I hope uh, that that little presentation was informative. And uh, let me see if I can get out of this now and back to uh, back to sharing with, I don't know, where am I? Okay. Oh yeah. All right. So, um, I forget how, do I still have time? I, I don't know. <laughs> I only see myself on the screen, but, um, yeah. What, what do I do now? I don't know. Oh, there's, there's hey, Joe. Okay. Um, yeah, you got five minutes. So, oh, okay. Well, um, that's I think you've got some events planned for this year. I didn't hear you mention them. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's yeah, preliminary, well, but. Yeah, well, of course, since since it's our 100th anniversary, we, we want to do some special things. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to have a, a huge uh, auction in August, whatever the first Wednesday of August it is. Um, and uh, we call it a night at the auction. And um, there will be. Uh, uh, you know, offerings from breeders and growers and and donations from wonderful sponsors and everything. And, uh, and that's going to be on a Wednesday evening at the Queens Botanical Garden. And let me see if I can find August here um, and give you a date. Um, it's August. The first Wednesday is the third. The third, yes, it'll be on. Thank you, D. No it problem. will be on August the third. Like I said, we call it a night at the auction, and then uh, we will be having 
a gala dinner. We're still working on the location and the date, but it will be in the fall. That It will be probably in the month of October or November. And uh, we'll have a, a special presentation. Uh, the dinner itself is going to be sponsored by our friends at ZooMed. So everybody who's a guest at the dinner is going to walk away with uh, a gift bag courtesy of ZooMed. Um, I, 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 I've got already got uh, wonderful donations from them, special things, you know, that Gary Bagnall, who's the CEO uh, of uh, ZooMed, is putting together for us and uh, has put together for us. Um, and and that that's going to be part of a special auction uh, at the gala dinner. We're, we're going to have an auction at the gala dinner as well. It's going to contain a lot of rare historical items, things that you will you you will not find easily on the internet um and that's again all to commemorate you know our 100th continuous year of operation um and uh you know we do have a website and we will and we have a, a facebook page fishy friends um so i encourage people who you know now know how to use that stuff to access the website and the facebook page to keep up with uh, our activities. And of course, everybody knows Greater City, we welcome everybody. There's no admission charge. There's no parking fees. There's nothing. We're, we're not about money at Greater City. We like to spend it to help other organizations. Uh, but as for ourselves, uh, we just want to welcome everybody and, and who wants to participate in this great hobby. Anytime you want to come down to the Queens Botanical Garden on the first Wednesday of the month, we'll be there and we'll welcome you with open arms. Now, the Thank website you, link is up, greatercity.net. You should be able to see it right now for more information on the events uh, taking place in the future. You can check out their website. Okay, so I'm going to uh, say goodbye for the, for the moment. I'm going to go over to... To the Wayne tribute, uh, as you said, he was a great guy, and uh, sorry that he's not with us here anymore. But uh, again, thank you guys for putting on this wonderful event, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about uh, Greater City. Well, thank you, Joe, um, and I'm going to kind of spend some time here while I. Uh, take care of something here. So I'm just going to mumble a little bit. Uh, and actually, Dee, you want to just uh, fill some time for me? Just well, chat. as we as well, well, no, I'm going to go one up. There's a lot of fellow club sister organizations that are out there. We've mentioned it before. Um, we at the NEC Northeast Council are trying to compile and maintain a calendar of events for all of our sister clubs that are members of the Northeast Council so that we can get exposure to all of these events taking place. Um, Greater City is just one, of course. Uh, I'm membership chairman of the Brooklyn Aquarium Society. Um, we both have sites on Facebook where we post our events. If you have upcoming events taking place for your organization, be sure to either post it on one of our sites you can contact me at the uh, bklyn that's brooklyn aquarium society at hotmail.com or you can follow us on our websites which allow you to contact us um if we don't know about your events it's hard for people to attend them <laughs> so that's one thing that i've been pressing for the last couple of months as i see a lot of your organizations also have facebook pages um, the other thing that Dave mentioned earlier is that you are able to go back and see our previous recordings on the Northeast Council's YouTube channel. Take that one extra second right now and click the like button because YouTube analytics likes that. And it gives us a foot up and gives us better exposure when you go to search for events and aquarium societies on YouTube. Um, the important thing about that is you want to take part in events like Greater City, like NEC, like Boston Aquarium Society, like uh, uh, 
so many organizations, the CVC, um, I'm not going to leave anybody out, Pioneer Valley. There's so many aquarium societies that are doing events, and we want to compile all our efforts so that these these events get the proper exposure and that you're getting reliable information from actual hobbyists. YouTube is great. I'm on YouTube. Many people on YouTube get proven information, things that have been published. As you've seen in uh, Joe Fredenzi's presentation, we have publications that go back 100 years, um, the Brooklyn Aquarium Society, 100 years, Northeast Council, so many years. Um, of proven experience. And this is why we want to foster the uh, exchange of proven information. And we want to help newer clubs that want to get a foot up, get established. So, um, you know, that is my soapbox moment. I couldn't urge you enough. If your organization is not a member of the NEC, go to NEC's website right now, northeastcouncil.net, and, 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 and join. Um, I believe I have that presentation up here, Dave. I see and, it there below. Yeah, I'm going to do my slideshow first, and then we'll um, go to Lee's video. I sent you the link in case you didn't. In case okay. you didn't. All right. I got it. And I do have sound, and hopefully I click the right button and we get the sound. Yeah, it's easy to miss that little box. You see the little I check know. box down there? Yep. Okay. I got it. So... <sighs> In putting this together, um, one of the things um, I wanted to kind of highlight is uh, Wayne Leibel. Um, Wayne passed away unexpectedly last year. Um, Wayne was a, a huge part of the NEC for many, many, many years. Um, so I've got a group of people here together uh, that have lots of history with Wayne um, in different parts, um, some associated with the NEC, some associated with the a ACA, et cetera. So I, I want to start here with just this uh, little tribute that I have um, put together a slideshow and uh, we'll go from there. So th this is music um, that Wayne actually formed. Uh, he was big into the accordion. So we'll play that for a little bit here as we get started. You all enjoy that. Um, Wayne definitely you know, had many talents, um, one of which was playing the accordion and, and a passion. Um, and there are actually some videos out in YouTube of him playing. Um, and we were actually able to get a copy of that. So, um, so Wayne, I, I, my introduction to Wayne was actually at the um, our first NEC weekend workshop, or I guess it was our second or third, um, in 1989 in Northampton. Um, he somehow was lucky enough to draw the Sunday morning slot at 9 a.m. Um, and for those that knew Wayne, you know he was very social. He loved to be at the the happy hours after the fact and. I'm sure he stayed up late that night, um, but he was ready to go first thing Sunday morning at nine o'clock. Um, and he was, we had somebody with us um, that we had brought from our newly formed Trout Fish Club of Burlington, who was fairly new in the hobby. And he was a little overwhelmed at the way Wayne was just throwing out Latin and Latin names of fish and, and all the information. And it was great. Um, that was, that was Wayne's, 
programs. Um, he actually spoke at the very first NEC weekend workshop um, in 1975 here. This is a, an article. Um, and that's when he was actually a, a student at Yale um, studying biochemistry. So uh, he got started in the weekend workshop early on. Um, he actually spoke at more NEC weekend workshops and conventions than any of our other speakers, um, followed closely, I believe, by Lee Finley and Tony Terciera. But um, in the 25th convention, um, we asked a lot of the people that had been involved to put up a little memory. And this was Wayne's memory. Um, and I guess I'll read through it real quick because um, it might be hard for some of you to read. Um, I had just moved to New Haven in 1973, attended Elm City, um, and began writing articles for the Barnacle Chronicle about killifish. One article caught the NEC's eyes, the development of the fish egg. So I was asked to talk about killifish egg development at the first NEC workshop in 1976 held in Norwalk at the Nature Center. I remember showing up with slides in a 16 millimeter film with a projector. I was surprised to be there. That was his actual first speaking gig ever. Um, when the women tending the door asked for my registration fee and I paid it, free workshop, the thought never ever entered my mind. I was happy and honored to have been asked. Penny Fall later reimbursed me. Um, what I remember most was the incredible talk by given by Dr. Robert Rofin about collecting fish in the tropics. It changed my life. So, you know, definitely Wayne was a very humble person. Um, you know, he didn't even expect to, to get in for free. So, um, and he was our, one of the speakers. One of the, and, and Wayne was definitely a very prolific writer. Um, one of the things I happen to have in my collection is a fairly rare thing. Um, it's the Sifter, the Journal of the Geophagus and Acquaintance Study Group. Um, this is the first one. These are all signed by Wayne. Um, and you know, this is his uh, first editorial, um, kind of welcoming everybody and hoping that this actually takes off. Um, so it's great to have this. Um, these actually came from Dave Quinn, who was a pres past president of the NEC um, when he was starting to thin out his collection of things. So Wayne was um, in depth, or gave him the honor of um, the NEC's highest honor, the, the Betty Mueller Award in 2002. This is the write-up um, that was submitted uh, for his nomination. And I'll read through this real quick too, because again, it's probably hard to read. I would like to nominate Wayne Liable for this year's Betty Mueller Award. I realize you and probably most of the previous Betty Mueller Award winners probably know why Wayne should receive this better than I. But here is why I think he should be awarded the highest honor from the Northeast Council of Aquarium Societies. We all know Wayne is a great speaker. He's spoken at NEC Aquarium Club since way before I was around and still does. He has been very frequent and very popular speaker in the past conventions and workshops, as they were previously known. He has been an active member of, of more NEC clubs than probably anyone else. He started as a kid at the Exotic Fish Society of Hartford. He was a member of the Elm City Aquarium Society when he was at Yale. He was a member of the Boston Aquarium Society when he was doing work in Boston. And at the time of this writing, he was a member of the North Jersey Aquarium Society and became very active in the North Jersey um, events. He was always at the their annual events and things like that. But his contribution to the aquarium hobby has gone way beyond the NEC too. His contribution to the ACA are numerous. Um, he was chairman, editor of the Bump Barge Bulletin. He was also made a fellow of the ACA, which is their form of the Betty Mueller Award, only they don't award it every year. Wayne has many other contributions to the hobby, a strong promoter of the hobby, reading accomplished, not to mention numerous articles he has written. He has two books that he's authored. He's been promoting a new interest in the hobby, the history of the hobby, and collectibles from the hobby from, are seeing a huge interest in part due to his work. He's also taken on the task of trying to continue the hobby into the next generations through kids via his new column in Aquarium Fish Magazine, Fish Kids. His passion for the hobby is almost unequal. And I'm sure there's lots of other things we can add to that, but um, at the time of, you know, 2002 and the person that submitted this, that was their thoughts of it. So, um, just some pictures of Wayne. Um, he was always fun and interesting. Like I said, he he loved the the social aspect and the happy hours and um, just fun to have around. Um, so just some 
shots that we have historically. Um, here's a few more. Um, him playing the, the accordion. Again, the accordion was another one of his passions. Um, the upper left is him at the ACA convention in uh, Springfield, 2015. And we were lucky enough to spend some time with him at the 2019 ACA convention. Uh, it's a picture of him with Lawrence Kent. Um, this was held in um, Cromwell, Connecticut. Uh, and we actually got to spend a fair amount of time with, with Wayne that, that weekend, which was great. And last slide but not least is just a picture of him with his longtime friend, Lee Finley. And I figured that would be a good slide. It's a, an intro to Lee's session. Um, Lee doesn't have uh, cameras or microphones on his computer, um, but we were able to record a session that Lee did um, with me. Uh, so hopefully we can go to that. And I will stop sharing. All right, and... let me give, it the old, give it the old college try here. <laughs> Always fun, the computer, the computer. All right. Oh, it's thinking. I can hear it playing, but D, I don't see it. It's coming. It's coming. Just in case I go south, you guys have to take over. <laughs> <laughs> We think of him for fish, but everybody knows that he is also there it goes. heavily tied in with music, which plays a, plays a great part of his life. Uh, he's for fish, he's for music, he's a teacher, uh, you know, a kind of man for, man for all seasons. Um, Wayne and I were friends for almost five decades. So I will apologize in advance if I occasionally say we, as opposed to him, because so much of uh, our lives were tied up together, uh, mostly enjoyable. Uh, we had some great adventures. We had some great fights. We had a lot of great projects that we worked on together. Next slide. We traveled together. Uh, this is a scene from from Peru in 1987. Uh, our, both of our uh, first trip to Peru uh, for collecting fishes, and Wayne and I spent two weeks there on a trip that had been organized by Chuck Davis from the uh, North Jersey Aquarium Society. But we did other traveling and meeting up to through fish conventions, workshops, shows for judging a wide wide variety of wide variety of fish related topics next slide but mostly we tried to have a lot of fun tying in the fish and the music this here is from uh, when it used to be called a workshop the uh, www the winter workshop in 1989 that uh for a little pop-up, Wayne and I uh, got together, had a lot of fun. I wrote a song called Butt Barsh Blues, and Wayne did the music to it. Uh, Wayne could play the music very good. I can't sing worth crap, but it was a lot of fun, which is something we always tried to have. Next. We like to play dress up. And we did this on more than one occasion here in a Victorian mode. Next. And we also, I guess we can call this undress up for a program that we did for the uh, North Jersey show. Uh, 
very enjoyable running around up on the stage in your underwear. Next slide, please. Now, for Wayne, as a tropical fish hobbyist, his start was in the middle 60s. Uh, this is a picture of a young lad, Wayne, uh, and his dad, Archie. And in the mid-60s, Wayne was a member of a Northeast Council Club, uh, the uh, Exotic Fish Society of Hartford. And this was his first introduction into the, quote, organized hobby. As as time went along, uh, after he went through, got into high school and stuff, he stopped some of the various uh, organized functions, but still did maintain tropical fish. I was trying to find out if during his kind of undergrad years, when he was at Dartmouth, if he kept fish, but I haven't been able to uh, haven't been able to find that out yet. So this would be to be determined. Next slide, please. The real good getting into the organized hobby again for him, uh, and which was heavy beginnings, was at the Elm City Aquarium Society. Uh, Wayne, in 1973, started at Yale working on his doctorate. And he showed up at the Elm City Aquarium Society, which is where myself and quite a number of other people first met him. And so began a, a long adventure and a wonderful uh, set together. At the time, I was the editor of this magazine called The Barnacle Chronicle, uh, which was a title that I was not particularly happy with at the time, but majority ruled. And uh, though I was the editor, I didn't get to name the magazine. So, but as time goes along, you know, now it has a nice ring to it. You can notice on the right-hand side here, uh, down three up from the bottom, uh, is a killifish guide by Wayne Leibel. That is five pages, uh, five pages long. Actually, it's six pages. I can't even subtract very good. And this, at the time, Wayne was very much into killifish, so he's known, became known strongly for cichlids. Next slide, please. This is just an example showing uh, the type of uh, writing with these long articles. Uh, at the time here, we were kind of crude in production, and my wife, Aline, did the typing for the magazine on the old Mimeo sheets that you had to type on and then run them on a drum to print out copies. Uh, and she would kind of like, oh no, not another article by him. Uh, even though she liked it, she liked Wayne, but he came out with these uh, very, uh, very lengthy and detailed articles. Uh, this certainly showing the way that he goes towards teaching, uh, which he's always been uh, towards the hobby. And you can see on the right hand side here, this was in uh, the November, December 75 issue with uh, with the thing, the part one of a series starting with New World Annual Killifishes, and it took up pages 8 through 14. Next slide, please. Here's just a the front page of this article, and you can notice bringing in the technical aspects here. Some, Maybe a little more now, and maybe not. I'm not sure, but if you can notice here, actually with explanatory footnotes, and uh, artwork done by Wayne, uh, of which he was a talented artist, which is another uh, great work of his. And you can see here th this thing of doing this with these fishes. So he gave the magazine quite quite a lot of flair. Next slide, please. And this here is an article another article by Wayne from Spawning to Hatching, A History of Egg Development. 
And this was his article, as he noted, and I believe David and Janine had it in their program for a memory that he uh, had of uh, regarding the Northeast Council, that this article, as Wayne put it, had caught the attention of the Northeast Council people. And uh, for the first workshop that was being planned, based on this article, he was invited to give a talk, which he said his, was his first talk to fish people. So, you know, in a way, looking back on this kind of a golden age of the Elm City Aquarium Society, serving as a jump off for introducing Wayne and having a lot of his works uh, available to the hobby at the time. And a lot of them are still valuable these days. Again, with some of Wayne's artwork on the right hand side. Those for the kind of crude printing that we did at the time drawings that he had, we'd take those, run those down to the Kinko's or whatever uh, copy shop and copy off as many as we needed to put into the, uh, put into the magazine. So this is the kind of the early beginnings of Wayne within the hobby. And uh, like I say, he did it within the club thing and within the Northeast Council. He's, he's truly one of the, one of the sons of the Northeast Council. Next slide, please. Now, Wayne, after he f finished and got his PhD, uh, he began bouncing around, as many new PhDs do, uh, grabbing a job here, grabbing a job there, without finding a particular uh, place. Or as recently in a memoriam written by Paul Loisel, who always has some very nice ways to put it, notice that Wayne spent five years drifting around in academic plankton, which is another way of saying that, uh, you know, he didn't have one steady job. He just bounced. And at the time, Wherever he was throughout mostly New England, uh, he would be involved with the clubs. Uh, this is the journal of the uh, Boston Aquarium Society. You can see on the left-hand side here in 1982. And at this time, Wayne was serving as an assistant visiting professor uh, at Boston College. Uh, involved in the society, and this is where he really started doing some of his uh, neotropical cichlid writings, here dealing with Geo uh, Geophagus acuticeps, the name of the time, and always, always providing and always going for the local societies. You know, he's been just a treasure within the Northeast Council. He's been a treasure within the the world aquarium hobby. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, was always a pleasure that I've enjoyed my time that I got to spend with him. Uh, we, like I say, many years together, many decades. And uh, we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fights. Uh, he was a great mentor uh, to myself as he was with other people. And let me say somebody, somebody that I'm going to really miss. I, I still get these things now when I'm uh, doing some research on the computer, and I'll run across an article, and my mind says, "Got to send Wayne a copy." And it probably, you know, it's probably one of those little flickers of electrons in the brain that doesn't even take a fraction of a second, but. As I'm thinking it, I know that it's not true, but I think I'll always be thinking it. You know, he's somebody I'll never, uh, never forget. Next slide, please. The one thing that through the years and showing the aquarium hobby material that uh, Wayne wrote extensively for all kinds of club publications and uh, the slick publications, the magazines of the hobby. 
and in a way we kind of followed each other uh, early on. Uh, we wrote some wrote articles for Freshwater and Marine Aquarium magazine. Later, uh, we both did lengthy runs. Uh, I did a column, and he did a almost unbelievable series of lengthy uh, articles on neotropical cichlids for Aquarium Fish magazine. And we both also ended up at DFH doing columns and freelance magazine or freelance articles. Uh, another big interest of Wayne's and myself has been the history of the aquarium hobby. And this was the first article in a five article series uh, that we did. We would have done more, but we got the, well, you know, we can't keep doing too much history in the magazine. So it goes from there. But this footprints of our past, uh, yeah, footprints of our past, which uh, was out in 1999, and uh, with both of our names appearing together, and it's it's proud for me. I'm proud to be listed and set along with him with uh, materials that we did in this area. Next slide, please. Just to end up, you know, there are many ways to remember Wayne and to think about Wayne. Uh, this picture here, which is one of my favorites of him, because Wayne was always fast to laugh, and he was also fast to get other people to laugh. This is uh, tied in with the Boston Aquarium Society here. Uh, Wayne on the right, and Ken Torman, who was aquarium of the BAS at the time. Uh, it's a slightly younger Wayne, a happy Wayne, uh, and this this is the way to remember him and, and everything that he did. I think that brings these slides to the end, and I would just like to make one one little uh, one little note here. A number of people have been helpful. Uh, and providing some slides and comments for uh, this little get together. And I'd like to thank my wife, Aline, Dave Quinn, uh, RIP, you know, past Northeast counselor, Steve Edelstein, who is uh, a cousin of Wayne's that I've become, become telephone friends and email friends with, uh, Jacques Brousseau, of the Tropical Fish Society of Rhode Island, uh, another Northeast Counselor, Anne Broadmeyer, uh, also of the Northeast Council. And I want to offer a special thanks to uh, David Banks, who has put up with me uh, in kind of getting this together and took a big stack of uh, almost scrambled JPEGs and turn them into this program, which uh, which I'm pretty happy with. So, and Dave was a big part of that. Okay, I'll turn it back over to you, David, and uh, you can go from there. Great. Um, yeah, I worked with Lee to get that put together. Um, I know Lee and his wife, Aline, are listening on YouTube today um, and have been actually most of the weekend. So, um, Dee, if we could bring everybody else into the stream here. We've got a number of um, people, like I said, that uh, have known Wayne throughout the years um, and want to give them all a chance uh, to say something. Um, I know we're only scheduled for about 10 more minutes, but I think we can run a little bit over that. So give everybody a chance to say something. Who would like to go first? Cynthia and Dean? I remember listening to, to Lee talk just now. One of the things I really remember about Wayne um, was when we went to the, the um, ACA convention in Chicago in, I guess that was 1990. Um, yeah. We didn't sign up fast enough to get on the, the behind the scenes tour for the Shed Aquarium. Um, but that turned out to be such a, a blessing in disguise because you and Janine and Wayne and Lee and I ended up going around that aquarium 
just talking our way through all of the tanks. And I was, I was so new to the hobby then. And it was just, it, it was like information heaven, you know, all of yeah. this discussion and fun people and such friendly, welcoming folks. That was just a, a wonderful, wonderful evening. Yeah, I would agree. Um, and I know Janine has a comment there probably too, but yeah, it was better, I think, than the behind the scenes tour. <laughs> <laughs> it was much more fun. And another really strong memory I have of Wayne is just how generous he was with his his time and his knowledge and his encouragement. I got really interested in the concept of um, breeding endangered species as, as a way that Aquarists could contribute, you know, in their own homes to preserving species that were threatened in the wild. And I didn't really know very much about um, genetics or population genetics, but I started reading a lot and teaching myself about the, the big question I had was, could we do it in a way that was really genetically beneficial to the species? And so Wayne helped me track down articles. He, he proofread the things that I was writing up about it, really helped me tackle a topic that was kind of out of my depth um, with, with great encouragement and, and, um, and real interest in what I was finding out. So it was just a very, he was such a supportive friend. Um, I really miss that. And let me just add, yeah, it was the 1990 convention um, that, that you guys got that nice tour of the shed uh, with, with Wayne. Um, it was the first ACA convention I had been to. I'm actually wearing the, the shirt from that uh, convention because um, it was such a wonderful time. Um, and for me, it was the first ACA convention I'd been to, the first big convention I'd been to. And there were all these these superstars of the hobby there, you know, Paul Loisel and Odd Konings and Lee Finley from, from the catfish hobby and Wayne. And everybody was welcoming everybody. Was, but Wayne just went that extra distance, right? He didn't care that, oh, you're pretty new to the hobby. You don't have that many tanks. You, you, there's a lot of stuff you don't know yet. He cared that you cared, that you were interested and in. He wanted to get that fire going with everybody. Um, you know, I knew him a lot through the the bunt barge bulletin, and here's just a couple of, of issues that I happened to bring in. Um, and this is the same cover art um, that was on the uh, um, the Sifter uh, journal that he did. Um, I've got all those as well, the uh, the journal of the, the Geophagus Equidin study group there. His art is really underrated. I love his art style. Um, but But his contrast here, in this issue, he's saying, Oh, here's this new scientific book. Why don't you all go out and, and grab scientific books that are full of, you know, descriptions of, of new fish and, and different things and, and scientific drawings. Why don't you go read about them and look at their jaw structure? And in another issue, he turns around and says, oh, we're going to have a special beginners issue because we care about beginners as well. So that was just him that he, yeah. he, he cared about the knowledge and he wanted to share it with everybody, but he, he wasn't, uh, uh, somehow elitist, right? He was always very, very humble, very down to earth. And and I think, you know, when I think of the aquarium hobby, I think of Wayne and I think of him as a role model for how people can be in that hobby or really in, in any hobby to, to, to get people involved and, and to get them to uh, be passionate about what they're doing and to share with others, be generous with what they're doing as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's interesting, Dean, that you bring up that beginner's issue. That is when my article um, is in that. And Wayne really encouraged me to write an article, really helped me. Um, and like everybody said, it was definitely a mentor. And he put it in the beginner's art um, edition. He says, not to mean that you're a beginner or anything. It's just a great breeding article that I wanted to have everybody see. So um, yeah. that was really cool. And, and that was one of the reasons I chose this because it had an article from you in it. I also got a couple other articles that I had or issues I had pulled up. I don't want to take too much time because I know we've got a lot of people to talk about, but there's an article in here by, by Lee Finley in one of these other issues. So he was always right. getting people involved, right? Saying, yes, come on, definitely. right? You have uh, something to share with people, something to, to uh, advance uh, what we're doing. When I, I helped to organize the, the ACA convention 
1993, I was with the, the Minnesota Aquarium Society, and I said, okay, I absolutely need to have Wayne Leibel on the speakers list. I don't, we can do other things, right? Maybe I can get uh, uh, Spin Kulander to come over from Sweden, and we did. Um, but I said, the, 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 the big thing is we have to have, we have, to have Wayne here. Um, and I don't know, uh, one of the things that, that he inspired me to do with the, 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 uh, the hobby was to start up the, the South American Cichlid Study Group, right? Because his, his Geophagus Equidin Study Group had, had run its course. It was no more, but it was such an inspiration. And that was, that was him, right? He would do things that inspired other people and they would do Absolutely. other things. Yeah. One little last thing uh, that I want to mention the, the, the funds, the, the Jordan Fund, the Loisel Fund for the ACA that would do conservation things, would get uh, 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 research grants to, to students, grad students, right? And there were tiny amounts of money compared to what like the National Science Foundation or someone could give. But they were the kind of things that he recognized the need for because at that time, struggling after getting his PhD that, that Lee was mentioning, that that those kind of little awards can make a huge difference in someone's life. And that's, that's Wayne, you know, he wasn't grandiose, but, but he did things that made a difference in people's lives. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you guys. Um, I don't know, Kathy, do you want to jump in and go next? Sure. Um, can you hear me? <laughs> yep. We can hear you. Okay. Um, I met Wayne in the late eighties at, I can't remember if it was an ACA, probably so. Um, but I mostly knew him through ACA conventions. Um, I also became involved with the Texas Cichlid Association, which I was involved with for about 20 years. And once we finally got Wayne to come to Texas, he was one of the speakers that our club and all the Texas clubs always wanted to have um, because he was so personable. I mean, his talks were so interesting. You could listen to him talk forever um, and so personable with all of our club members. Um, I'd go to NEC conventions and we'd hang out there. He was just a wonderful friend. Um, and again, um, he would do anything for any of our clubs. Um, he, we were also involved in the Federation of Texas Aquarium Societies, which is kind of our take on NEC um, here in Texas. And Wayne would also uh, attend any of those conventions and was always ready to contribute, ready to give advice. Um, if you're sitting there talking to him, there would be any number of people that would come up and want to talk to him and ask him questions. And he was always so gracious um, and always ready and willing to share with folks. So we're going to miss him. Miss him a lot. Yeah. Yep. Misses uh, YouTube pictures of insects and all kinds of interesting things, too. He always yes. had interesting things to share with everybody. Yes, he Great. Did. Thank you, Kathy. Um, Chris, you out there? You talking to me? Chris Biggs. <laughs> Are you Is it snowing know? still? <laughs> no, people don't even talk to me about what, what, with my first name, so I don't even know. Yeah, know. <laughs> uh, actually, like it's we did that uh, I, w right after Wayne's passing. We did a, a live feed YouTube kind of a celebration of his life, and a lot of these people that were here today were also a part of that. And it, I still remember that. But when you started talking about the ideas of, of trying to put something together, and I apologize, I just I, I haven't had the time to be able to do much of this this past couple of weeks with the massive melt we have. But in all that time I've spent in the yard working and sitting on a tractor and dealing with stuff, I've really spent a lot of time with my memories of Wayne. And uh, I've gone through uh, some of the things that are a little bit more important to me, a little bit more personable, and some things that I probably, honestly, I've kind of forgotten over the years, but there's things that have come back and a bit more fresh. And a lot of people won't even know anything about these things. I believe the first ACA I was taken to, and I'm, I'm, I mean taken to because I was a kid, I believe I was eight years old. And Wayne Leibel approached me. I didn't approach him. He approached me. And I remember one day he sat me down on a couch and we were sitting just in the hallway. I don't even remember where it was. I know I went with my parents. And, they, and Wayne, basically, every time somebody came by, he introduced them to me. He made me a part of everything. I was a focus of everything that was going on with him. And there was at one point in time, I think it was on Saturday, that my parents were doing stuff. And Wayne said, he's fine with me. And I stayed with him the whole day. We did everything that went on during the normal ACA. We went to talks. We had everything. And that's really what I think started it, started fostering that whole mentorship, I'll call it. Later on, when I started going and doing my, uh, my, my personal studies, long before university, long before I was even really in, in finishing high school, 
I started doing uh, personal dissections and I was doing all my own pathology and I was doing all sorts of stuff like that. And it was really him that kind of fostered me. We'd spend hours on the phone and I've talked about that before. Uh, we just and him going through stuff like that. Okay, look for this shaped bone, look for this. Cause I had no idea what I was doing and this was long before the internet. So you just kind of had to muddle your way through. But I was very, very intrigued and inspired by everything I was doing. And he was there the whole journey with me. And nobody knew that except for my parents and him. He was not a person that went around talking about it or telling people about it or anything. And then very, very later on in my years, uh, after, I, after I was finishing university and stuff, and I started more dabbling. As anybody that follows my channel knows it's not just about fish. I've got, I'm surrounded right now with probably 70 highly venomous tarantulas and centipedes, and we've got some snakes. I don't have any venomous snakes. I don't have anything that would be, uh, uh, I'll put it this way. My wife knows that I won't keep anything that's deadly anymore. I will, t I will gladly accept an animal and work with an animal that'll give me a bad day or a bad couple of days, but nothing that's going to threaten my life. But I remember when I was keeping rattlesnakes on a very, very large scale, I bet you Wayne Leibel phoned me at least once a week just to check in to make sure everything was okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, I find this a very, very emotional. Even still, it's still very, very fresh. He was a very dear friend to many of us. And I'll always miss him. He was a yeah. father figure. And I thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. Yeah, well, thank you. And and yeah, the tribute you did to him shortly after his death, I mean, that went on for, I think, over two hours. So, yeah. you know, I, I could only squeeze 45 minutes in here. So, um, yeah, and we're actually easily, a little uh, over time. You but... probably have one of, uh, one of your people could easily find that link on YouTube and uh, could probably yep. put the link up there if anybody wants to watch it at their leisure and stuff like that. It's just stories, sharing stories of many people sharing their stories about Wayne. Yeah. Yeah. And I know the, the college um, did another one. Um, and the reason I really wanted to do this is because nobody at the college, it was really focused on um, his students and yes. some of the professors working with them. And there wasn't anybody from the fish hobby that um, spoke up. So I figured I'd give everybody a, another chance here. So yeah. thanks. Thanks, Biggs. Um, and Janine, I think you're still up. Are you there? I am. There I am. Um, as most people know, um, David and I both got involved um, in the hobby, in the organized hobby together. Um, I was really into the fish. I did the water changes. I fed them. I bred them. I had my tanks and my fish. Uh, but slowly I kind of um, migrated into... Um, really being the people person that I am. I, I love the people in this hobby, um, and I became more of an organizer for the hobby than an actual hobbyist myself. Um, but one of the best memories I have of Wayne is, um, let's see if I can share my screen here. And screen. Share screen. This is my favorite picture of Wayne. It, to me, it depicts the great person that he was, the fun-loving person that he was. Um, this was at an NEC convention years ago. We had these balloons. The we, I don't see it sharing yet. Just give oh. it a second. Just try that share screen again. And while Janine's doing that, I'll just add, you know, we, we hosted Wayne a number of times, um, speak at our local club here in Burlington. Um, and it was always an interesting, fun time. Um, he actually brought me fish. He um, brought me my the only Episto I've ever been able to keep. Um, you know, I told him, our water is rock hard. We can't keep any Epistos. He says, oh, try these, Epistogrammestein Dachneri. And I was actually fairly successful with them. So that was fun. Janine, oh. you sharing? Okay, I'm trying again. No? Oh. I see it. Just make sure, is it? Uh, Doesn't want to let me click share. If you if you click on the bottom app, you select it. Or is it? Nope, it's I'll, just a picture. I'll come down. Okay, oh. but anyways, um, what I wanted to say is that what we did is we, we tied balloons to um, the back of people's jeans, the belt loop on the back, helium balloons. So when they'd walk around, 
the balloons would, um, hi, we're both here together. We really do live in the same house. <laughs> um, when people walked around, the balloons would kind of fall back behind them. And then when they stopped, they'd pop up above their head. And Wayne just thought that that was a hysterical thing, as did I. So we, as the, the Tropical Fish Club of Burlington, had Wayne here several times as a speaker. And one particular time I remember is we're all we're driving home together in the car. And we, we live about 40 minutes from Burlington. So it was a little bit of a ride home. And we're all watching all these falling stars out out of the window. We couldn't wait to get home. <clears throat> we grabbed a beverage. We ran down to the dock. We all laid down on the dock. So excited we're gonna see all these wonderful shooting stars in the dark. And we saw one. We laid there for about an hour and a half till we finally gave up and came back in again. So I just wanted to leave you all with this, with that little memory and this picture of our lovable Wayne. And that's all I have, thank you. Great, thank you everybody. Um, and sorry we went a little bit over, um, but uh, I th think this was great. Um, it's good to hear everybody.